a reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. We have been reflecting on the theme of freedom, the freedom that a disciple needs. And in the first reading, we saw the example of Elisha. Now, St. Paul, in this letter to the Galatians, reflects on true freedom, on liberty, the freedom that the disciple of Christ must possess in one's heart. Now, St. Paul declares openly that Jesus has set us free, and so we should not return to unfreedom, to slavery. Jesus, wow, gained liberty for us at a cost. He set us free by dying on the cross. His act of freedom, the summit of his freedom. Now, St. Paul reminds the Galatians that freedom or liberty does not mean giving in to the flesh. Now, this is a good reminder to all of us. We should not say, okay, Jesus has set us free, so I can do whatever I want to do. I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for making me free. Well, St. Paul knows human psychology. So he says, that is not true freedom. If you give in to the dictates of the flesh, if you give in to the dictates of sin, if you give in to the dictates of this world, then you are back to slavery. So freedom is not just being able to do what I want to do. That is not the case. For the Christian understanding of freedom in the context of discipleship, freedom is not self-indulgence. Freedom is in love. Love, which is the summary of the law, according to St. Paul. If you love your neighbor, if you love God, you're totally free. For a person who truly loves will not do anything against God or neighbor. A person who is truly a loving person and bears this law in his or her heart is totally free from the dictates of corruption, of envy, of hatred, anger, of lust, of violence. So this is the freedom that St. Paul is talking about. The freedom to love. The freedom that is love. Freedom from all evil, intent, and action towards other people. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul is also quite realistic. He says that in our persons, we find a conflict between the flesh and the spirit. This is the drama of our daily existence 
in our path towards freedom. The spirit of love tells us you should be totally free for love. You should be totally available for love. Nothing should hinder you from loving. That's freedom. Nothing hindering me from loving. But there is the flesh inviting me to think of myself, to be selfish, to disregard other people. And we know how inviting the flesh could be. And so St. Paul invites us to be focused on the invitation of the spirit of love, which leads to full freedom and to be vigilant because the flesh is always there, offering us, sometimes in a better way, how to conduct ourselves. So, dear brothers and sisters, freedom is a gift of Jesus to us. He has set us free. He has set us free to love. But be vigilant, the flesh is still alive. Be vigilant. So, freedom is both a gift and a task for us. We pray that St. Paul's example may lead us to true freedom found in love.